In this video, I'm going to talk about some very interesting disconnected table tricks. No further ado, let's start together. Alright fellas, trick number one, the ability to pick up a measure using a slicer. Now this was relatively harder to do back in the day when we did not have fields parameter, which is relatively a newer feature in Power BI, but that also creates a disconnected table. It's very, very easy to set it up. Please take a look and that'll be my first trick. So I have this simple pivot table here, which is where we are taking a look at year and channel. Against that, we have three calculations or three measures, total sales, total units and commission. But I don't want to see all of three. I would like to have a slicer and from the slicer, I want to pick up any of the three measures if I happen to check on that. Now, how do we do that? That is done using a fields parameter. So what do I do? I go over to the modeling tab. In the modeling tab, I have a new parameter and I'm going to choose a fields parameter. From here, I will give the parameter a name. I'm just going to call this as my calcs. And here is where I will add the three calculations, which is where I will add my commission uh, and I will add my sales and I will add my units right here. And I want to add a slicer to this page, of course, I'll click on create. And this actually gives me a slicer on the page like this. Now, if you happen to click on the slicer, nothing is going to happen because this particular slicer is not yet linked to this pivot table as of yet. So what do I do? I just take a look at this particular slicer and there's a calcs field right here. If I happen to drag that in the pivot table, it is going to start to link that. So uh, it's come in the columns as of now. I can just remove all of the three uh, calculations from here and drag that to the value section instead and now because total units were selected you can see that I have total units or total sales or commission or even perhaps multiple items can be selected like that now if you're wondering that how is this a disconnected table trick now if you take a look at the model at the moment sure enough we have the two dimension tables and one fact table but this actually creates a disconnected table that we have just witnessed trick number two how do you create a model denomination of course using a disconnected table what do i mean by that it's a super helpful thing please take a look again the same year and the channel and the total sales that i'm playing with in my pivot table now i would want the sales to be either presented into units like the way it is or presented into thousands in which case i will write 7.9 here not seven seven thousand nine hundred ninety seven so that's what i'm trying to write so either i want to show this particular denomination of thousands or i want to show the units denom denomination in case the number would have been bigger you can obviously add millions and things like that as well so but how do you set that up in the first place now quickly you will have a slicer up on the page and in the slicer you will have two things at the moment you will have units and you will have thousands and depending upon what you click the number is going to change to be able to get the slicer we need a table and let's just create that table first so i'm going to go over to the uh, data tab right here and i am going to go to the home tab and in here i will make a new table now you can obviously create the table using the enter data option in power bi but i'm just creating that using dax because that just gives me a little more flexibility of editing the table should i want it so I'm going to call this as denom and I'm going to say that I want to want to use the formula called data table. Now here, the first part of the formula is what is the name of the column? I'm going to call the column as tag and that is going to be, let's say a string. And then after that, the second column name is going to be the value. Uh, that will be the name. So that will be value. And that is going to be, let's say an integer. Now is the time to input the rows data. So I will just create two curly brackets. The first curly bracket is to start to initiate the rows and the first curly bracket, the second curly bracket or the nested curly bracket is to enter the data of the first row. So in the first row, I would want to write, let's say, um, maybe a thousand. This is going to be a text and the value of that thousand is going to be, let's say 1000. That is an integer. Now I close the curly bracket and that is my first row. Now I'm going to create a second row for that. And that is going to be, let's say my units and the value is absolutely going to be one, right? Close the curly brackets first, then close the main bracket, press enter, and you get a two columnar table like this. Now, using this particular column, I can obviously create a slicer. Let's just do that. Back to the visual, and in the visual, I will insert a slicer, of course, and that is right here. And in the slicer, I'm gonna add the field, which is going to be nothing but my tag from the denom table like this. Now, I've got a slicer right here, and as soon as I click on the slicer, nothing really happens to my table right here because the value which is one which is sitting behind in the table or the value which is thousand which is also sitting behind in another column of the table needs to be brought into this calculation and start to affect this calculation so i'm going to maybe uh, create a modified calculation so i'm just going to call this as total sales modified now typically you would just 
include the denomination right within the calculation itself. Let's just go ahead and modify our total sales calculation. So here I have my total sales and just after that I'm going to divide that by either the unit selection or the thousand selection. So I'm just going to maybe use the divide function. So I can say hey uh, divide and divide this very calculation by whatever is selected. So I'm going to say selected value that is the option that I choose selected value or whatever value is selected in the slicer. So I'm just going to call this as denom and in the value column. An alternative I can provide that in case none of the values are selected then in that case just show the normal number and that is one. Close the bracket press enter nothing changes because at the, at the moment you have a unit selected right here and if I change that to a thousand you're going to see that this number starts to show like this. Now obviously it's it should be one decimal and I can do that so I can just go right here and make this as one decimal that becomes a little more readable but that is maybe a two decimal and that it looks a lot lot better. So this is units and this is thousands. This is awesome. If you're enjoying the video thus far, you're absolutely going to love my courses on DAX, data modeling, Power BI, Power Query, and the M language. These are extremely structured courses where I teach you the basics first, and then I take you to more advanced levels and start explaining you the complicated topics to solve more advanced problems. You can take these learnings and apply them to your own data very, very confidently. Hundreds of students have joined these courses from all around the world and they have sent some raving feedback about the course. In case you're interested, please take a look at the link in the description of the video. I'll be welcoming you in the course very soon. In case you're a senior professional and you would want this work to be done rather than yourself wrangling with the data and trying to um, write some tax code by yourself, you need some professional help to be able to build your reports and automate all of the data and Excel and Power BI work please do not hesitate to reach out to me on my email below and my team is going to set you up real quick. Trick number three, this is going to blow your minds out in case you haven't seen that before. Now, I have this simple pivot table, a little longer one this time. So I have year and then the week and then the total sales right here. And what I would like is to build a slicer and in which I would have obviously the weeks. So let's just say that if I say week number six and if I select that value, my table should just limit up until here and none of the further numbers should just appear and that's my table. In case I let's say say number week number 10, I just pick up that, then the table should just limit here and none of the value should show up further. This is insanely helpful for some peculiar scenarios in case you wanna limit the table until a certain value, this technique is gonna be super helpful. To be able to do something like this, what we would need is a table, which is where we would need to have a year selector and the week selector. Let's just go build that table first. All right, I'll start off by creating a new table, obviously in the home tab and a new table. I'm gonna call this table as weeks disconnected. And the table that I'm trying to build would look something like this. So I would obviously have the week column I would have the week sort column because the week is a text so you would need something to sort it. So week sort column is something that I would have. Since the weeks could be duplicated in multiple years, same weeks can be in 11 and the year 12 as well. So I would have the year column just to classify. And I also wanna have the largest date of the week in that year. So let's just say that if you're talking about week number one, and let's say any particular year, let's say 2012, then assuming that the largest date is 1st of January, so seven, one 2012 that's my large largest date of that week is also something that i would like to display it until that period and that's how we will limit that particular date until that time okay so enough talking four columns week sort year and the largest date let's just go for that so i'm going to go ahead and start to write the summarize function and i'll say i want to summarize my calendar table and the three columns that i need is the week i would also need the need the week sort i would also need the year uh, these are the three columns that I need. And if I actually press enter, I sure enough get that table, but I haven't gotten the last date of that week or the max date of that week. Let's just go ahead and start to add that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around the add columns function. So I'll say add columns. So I'm trying to add a column to this three columnar table. And the column that I'm trying to add is a max date column. And the max date is going to be the max of the calendar date. Close the bracket and press enter. Now at the moment, you're gonna see that all the dates are the same, which is 31, 12, 2012, because it's literally finding the max date of the calendar table, but that's not what I want. I want this particular context, the context of 2011, 
and the context of week number 27. If these two contexts are applied to the calendar table, then what's the max date? To be able to do that, I need to have a context transition. And for that, I will use the calculate function around that. Now, if for some reason you don't understand this context transition thing, I would highly recommend that I have done multiple videos on context transitions. I will link all of them in the comments below, and I will highly recommend that you should take a look at context transition as well. All right, so now that we have the correct answer, the four columns created, this is a disconnected table. If you take a look at the back, this is not connected to any other table, which is right here, weeks disconnected. And we will use this disconnected table not to now build a slicer. All right, in the blank uh, page right here, which is where I will right click, I will say add a visual. And the visual that I wanna add is nothing but a slicer to which I will add the column that I have just created, which is the year column. One is going to be that. So weeks disconnected year that goes in here. And then the second thing that I would want to put in the slicer is going to be nothing but my weeks. So my week is right here that goes in right here. Now, if you take a look, we have the ability to pick up any particular week. At the moment, it's not sorted. So I'll just quickly go back and sort the data. So I will come back right here and click on this particular column and I will sort it in the ascending order so that it's sorted. That should have been given me the right answer. All right, good to go. At the moment, if you happen to click on any value, you can see that the table doesn't limit itself. Now, what I want to do is I want to create that limiting behavior in my calculation. That means if week eight is selected, the calculation should just stop right here and not calculate anything further. So I need to create a modified measure for that. All right, let's just start with a measure and I'm going to call this as my sales filtered and that I'm going to start to write uh, something like this. So the very first thing that I would want to do is to be able to do this calculation, I need to pick up this particular value. That's point number one. Then I need to go to my calendar table, which is where the year and the week columns are coming from. Remove any kind of filters and then apply this filter, which is week 12 and stop the table right there. Now I am going to get all the weeks from one through 12 and then I will use that as a filter to my sales table. Well, you will see once I write the measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to first of all capture this particular value, which is week 12. So I'm gonna say this is going to be nothing but my selected. Let's just create a variable. So I'm gonna be calling this as max week date. And that is going to be the, let's just say selected value of the uh, disconnected table and the max date right here. Now this is going to give me whatever date that we have in the fourth column of the table that we have created, which is where we have a uh, year, week, and one of the columns is the max date. All right, let's just say the return statement. And after that, I will start to write my filter condition. First of all, I will remove the filters of my calendar table. So that removes the filter. So all calendar and just one column, date column. So the filter is gone. Now I will say that, hey, why don't you check every single date in the calendar table? And every single date should be less than or equal to the, uh, the max uh, week date that we have created as a variable up on the top. Now, this particular table is going to stop the calendar table up until week number 12 because week number 12 has been selected right here. So somewhere here, it will stop the table. Now, this 12 weeks of data or 12 weeks of dates is something that I would like to apply as a filter to my sales and only calculate the sales values up until here. So I'm going to go ahead and start to write my calculate and I'll say, hey, calculate, why don't you act your total sales on the filter on the custom filter that I have created for you, which is nothing but this filter, close the bracket, press enter, and this should start to work. So if I happen to drag this calculation onto my visual, you're going to see that it actually not quite gives us the answer that we were expecting. Let's just fiddle with this for quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and select week one quickly. And there was no sales in week one. We just have week two. So let's just select week number two right here. And the answer seems to be correct because the sales in week number two was 494. And you get the same answer all across. And if you select week number three, the sales of week two and three is close to about $800. And that is also correct. But this is not what I'd expect it to be. What I would want is that, um, it should not total the sales, it should just keep the sales separate. That means consider the week two filter as the way it is, consider the week three filter as the way it is, do not accumulate the sales. 
So to be able to apply this filter and apply this filter, I would just go ahead and wrap my function in the keep filters function. So I'll say keep filters and I will select that, close the bracket and press enter. And that should start to give me the right answer. Now, if you take a look at the visual, it kind of works well. So week four, week five, week six, week seven. And of course, you're wondering that why is the table not being limited right here? It's because we have an unfiltered calculation placed in the table at the moment. So if you happen to remove this calculation, so I'll just go ahead and have happen to remove this calculation. So I'll just open up the fields, remove this calculation. Now you can see that this behaves as the way that you would expect it. Week nine, week 10, week 11, week 12, so on and so forth. Trick number four, the highlighting techniques. A lot of times when you have slicers applied, uh, along with the visual, the slicers actually filters the visual, not highlights the visual. So let's just say that I already have the disconnected slicer that we just worked with a while ago. If you take a look at this particular slicer, because this is a disconnected table, let me just show you the, that once again. So if you take a look at the slicer right here, this particular table is disconnected from any other tables in the model. Therefore, any filters applied to the week column have no impact whatsoever on the calendar date, on the sales or whatsoever. So now, if you happen to actually click on any other slicer right here or the value in the slicer, this does not affect this particular visual. Now I would want the effect to be highlighting rather than filtering. So if week number 10 has been selected right here, I want the value of week number 10 to be highlighted and not just filter. How do you do that? It's a very simple conditional formatting measure. So I'm going to go ahead and start to create a conditional formatting measure since I want the highlighting to be done. So I'm going to call this as conditional formatting. Now all that I would want is I'm going to compare two values to compare this particular value and compare this particular value. If these two values match, please highlight. So let's just go ahead and start to create my variable. And the variable is going to be the current year. So current year, uh, which is going to be the selected year from this particular table that we have created, which is the disconnected table. Um, selected value, I have to use that first. So selected value and then disconnected table. And then that is going to be my year. And the next thing that I'm going to create as a variable is going to be the current week. So that is going to be, again, the selected value, but not for the year column, but for the week column, right? Close the bracket. Now, I want to compare these two with the values that I have created, like all of these weeks. So this and this. So let's just go ahead and test it real quick. So if I just see the return statement and if I say, hey, why don't you just concatenate the current year and just maybe add a little pipe symbol and concatenate that with the current week and press enter. If I just drag that particular calculation right here, you're going to see that I do get 2011 and the week of 10 displayed all the way out right here. Now, this particular calculation should ideally give me a true here because this is also 2011 and this is also week number 10. So it should give me a true here. Now, all that I would want to do is build this check that you check this particular value with this value and we are kind of good to go. So I will go ahead and modify my calculation and I'll say, hey, why, what is the selected value? So return selected value of the year from the calendar. Is that equal to the current year? And my second check is going to be the selected value of the calendar table week. Is that equal to the current week or not? Right. Uh, and that's pretty much my check. Press enter. Let's just see if I get a true or false or not. Sure enough, I do get a true right here, which is where the week 10 is equals to week 10 right here. Now, it's just about coloring now. So I'm going to say that, hey, here is my true and false. So this is my true and false. So if this happens to be a true, then please color it as a yellow or whatever color you'd like, press enter, and this actually gives you yellow. Now, I've already applied conditional formatting, so it just turned yellow, but hey, in case you would wanna apply that to the total sales column, I'll show you how. So you can just go right here, right click on total sales, and say conditional formatting, the background color, and here I will say pick up the field value, which is nothing but my CF a measure, click on okay, and that also applies in here. Now, if you happen to change anything, it actually highlights and rather not filters.